This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 11 7 22, show number 437. We are back from a week's hiatus. I was away. Nick, you were doing your GAN seminar. And what is the market telling us today? Well, the markets are actually hanging in there pretty well today. You have the Dow um, really leading the charge. I never like to see that, but it is the case today, up about 235 points as we speak. That's a gain of roughly seven tenths of one percent but surprisingly enough the nasdaq is up one tenth of one percent and that even comes after news from apple earlier today saying that they're going to have lower than expected iphone 14 shipments due to production issues in china so apple today believe it or not um trading down by just one percent down a dollar fifty but normally that would weigh on the sector a bit more so i don't think things are terrible i think everybody right now is kind of leaning or looking forward to the election. Um, they're hoping, I don't know what they're hoping for, but the markets are expecting uh, gridlock to come into play if there's a, a red wave sweep. And that's kind of what the chatter is out there at the moment. So, you know, um, most people are thinking that the Republicans are going to take over the House and the Senate. Um, either way, I think it's a little too late. A lot of damage has already been done by this current administration. So, um, you know, th there's going to be a lot of fixing, but there'll be gridlock in there and the market seem to love gridlock. Hey, so we haven't talked about this lately and I know we have other items on our agenda here, but uh, Twitter is now a full subsidiary of uh, Elon Musk Inc. And and they just laid off half the people uh, that work there last uh, Friday. Yeah, that seems to be what we've, we've heard in the reports, that he did cut the workforce significantly. The stock is no longer a publicly traded company, as they're now private, so we can no longer chart it. Um, the suspicion is that in about uh, two to three years, he's going to bring the company back out into the public market. So that that's the, uh, the storyline behind it. But yeah, it looks like he did make some significant job cuts. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there, you know, but uh, uh, again, um, I, I don't know what uh, was going on inside of Twitter, um, but, you know, e Elon Musk will make them a little bit uh, lean and mean. And God knows they need it because talk about a coddled workforce, uh, safe spaces and you know all these other things, three uh, meals a day, uh, doggy daycare, you name it. They gave everything. Yeah, but you know the bottom line is don't if you're a company you need to make a profit at some point, right? You need to make some money. So I'm not sure they were very good at doing that. They might have been very good at you know uh, providing a lot of benefits for their employees, but the shareholders are the people that really put money into the company. They got to see some kind of a return eventually. So um, I think uh, Elon Musk did pay a bit much for that company. I don't think it was worth $54 a share, maybe 25 would have been a fair offer um, because of the, the, the followers and the usage. So we'll see what comes out of it. But, um, you know, we, we definitely would look for something to change in Twitter. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago, you made the Nat Gas call and tell us what's happened. Yeah. So Nat Gas today is up 11%. On Friday, it was up uh, about 10%. I have closed out my Nat Gas positions today. Um, I had a nice big winner in uh, Nat Gas UNG call options, which is the ETF for Nat Gas. And I closed out my Nat Gas swing trade uh, the second half for over 23% today. So that was a good day for my members and myself. Uh, we made some pretty good money there. But I don't even think the Nat Gas trade is over. I'm just taking profits here because it's up so much so quickly, but um, I'll be a buyer in this play again on a pullback. So if members want to join me with that. They can. I've done the same thing with crude oil recently as well. We've been in and out of that several times, made some really, really monster percentage gains in the options as well as in the swing trades. And now it's Nat Gas's turn and we've done it with silver too. Silver has been on fire as well. 
So, you know, really uh, pretty good times here at Bullseye. You don't have to be in a million things. You just got to be in the right thing. Hey, so talking about gold uh, last Friday, gold and silver like shot up. Yeah, Friday, we had a huge surge in gold, a monster surge in silver as well. But I think it was on the back of the dollar really coming in pretty sharply. So if you look at a dollar chart, you'll see the dollar really fell by about 2% on Friday. And that was all gold needed to make its move higher. I still am in the camp that uh, while gold is a, has a tradable upside move here, it's not the final low. So I just want to make sure everybody uh, understands that. Unlike silver, I think silver low is already in. Um, but gold right now, um, hanging in there pretty well today, it's basically flat on the session. So, um, you know, just pausing and digesting the gains from Friday. But you do have a tradable move here in gold to go a little bit higher. But, you know, overall, silver is still my favorite play right now. Yeah, well, interesting that they just kind of sprung out of nowhere and looks like silver is heading up to like 22 bucks or so, right? Yes, that's exactly correct. When you look at um, silver futures right now, I think they're headed even to around 23. So um, right now they're trading at around just under 21. I think we'll go to 23. That's where we'll probably pause a little bit, uh, maybe a pierce of 23. But, you know, bigger picture, uh, you know, as I've said already on your program, Kerry, you got the, the, the scoop first. You know, I think in bigger pictures, you know, silver is going above 33. So, you know, down the road, it's going much, much higher. But in shorter term, um, yeah, we'll see that silver get to 23 in the near term. All right. And finally, Bitcoin, it broke over. It, it broke out from its uh, 2017 high to back over 20,000, but it's down today. Yeah, Bitcoin's down about 2% today, trading in around 20,700 area. You know, overall, it lives to fight another day. That's what it's been doing. Um, you know, it inflates a little bit from here and there. It's just, but basically the larger time frame is a bearish pattern. As you know, I've been saying it'll go sub 13. I'm actually thinking the next fall in Bitcoin, it goes sub 12. So mm -hmm. right now, enjoy the bounce while it lasts. You got probably might have a little bit more to it, maybe a little bit more chopping and slopping as the pattern, the bearish pattern doesn't look to be a breakdown yet, but it, it's it's getting soon, it's getting uh, more to the breakdown each and every day. So you want to be careful here. All right. Well, that is it for today. Make sure you go over to Dick's site in the money stocks.com, see how he made those latest calls on energy and silver. And while you're at it, take a look at the Twitter feeds at ITMS at Nick Santiago 01 and at Kerry Lutz. Emails are welcome, kl at kerrylutz.com. Feel free to post your comments on the YouTube channel. We read them all, and we will respond on both the show and on the site. And, Nick, that is it for today. I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Sounds good, Kerry. Thank you.